Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, here we are. Got the voters' pamphlets. They're in, folks. They're in. The only thing you're having short now and you're waiting for are the the ballots, you bet. on the ballots, as you know, we're a vote by mail aspect of it. And so guess what? I'm going to do everything that I can to sort of identify some of the issues and what, what are the real issues, if you will, that we're facing with, and I'm, like anything else. But make sure you read this piece. It's a very, very important situation. Very, very important. Okay? Good. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to, we've, got, we've got a guest here today, that a very, uh, very exciting guest who's been around for quite some time. Okay. Knew her when I was in the Marine Corps years back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, introduced myself way back. In fact, that's when we started. We started out. She started with, with uh, Ron Wyden, Congressman Ron Wyden. Mm -hmm. I started with Congressman Ron Wyden uh, when he was a representative at mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, and, and we spent a lot of time on, on Oregon Voters Digest, he and I. And then all of a sudden, I met I met this young lady that was sitting up there in his office one day, and I used to go in there all the time. In fact, I'm still I'm still reminded of the of the person who was the uh, secretary there. What was her name? Marie. Marie. Yeah. That was good. That was good. That was good. Yes. Well, look, let's get down and tell her. She's going to be here 30 minutes with us, and what we're going to do? We're going to give her the opportunity to to share with her about who she is and kind of introduce herself to you, and then maybe identify some of those specific areas that she's going to work on once she's elected city said city council person for that seat. It's not a, it's not an easy job. It's definitely not an easy job. But in all due respect, she's had eight years at the county, and that's and I was there at one point in time. That's a tough job. I was up there trying to raise the flag and whatever, and I had and here I'm running run at the same time. But but hey, but it was quite an experience. It was quite a job, and I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to get a better feel of who she is. And so I want yeah. you to have the opportunity to now understand a little bit more about it. So why don't we just jump in there? How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Doing good, good. And what about that baby girl? Oh, I my God. You, Malaya. I, I, Malaya I, I, Simone. I, I thought you was going to bring her with you today. I thought about and it. You should have brought her. <laughs> you should have brought her. Maybe next time, later on, then you can. Okay. After I win, I'll, I'll bring her back. I'll bring please, my whole family back. Please, please. Let's do that. And then your, your son. Yeah, my son. And, yeah, and you know him. You've known, known him. him. Yep, no, little that's kid. right. Exactly. So look. Why don't, we just, Loretta, why don't you just start up right off the bat? You know, hey, I, when you first got into, I said when you first got into politics was when you went and, and what was it? You was at the River League or something? You just graduated from school or something like that? That's right. Just go from there. Just, That's just right. start educating. Well, let me, let me just go back a bit. Thank, I want to thank the, vo the voters and the, and the viewers for, for yeah. tuning in because I think people, um, they jump over spots about yeah. who I am. Okay. And so when you think about Loretta Smith, I want you to think about Loretta because she looks at the city of Portland through the lens of five generations of the Smith family. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather came here and my grandmother from Brooklyn, New York, to work in the Kaiser shipyards. Mm -hmm. And that was during World War II. And after the war was over, the folks who had recruited them, they wanted all the black folks to go back to where they came yeah, from. And right. fortunately mm -hmm. uh, for me and for my family that my uh, grandparents, they stayed. Were you and, born yet by the time? When no, in 1944. Okay, okay, oh, 44. Okay. Right, and so they stayed, and they, they raised a family, which my dad was one of eight. He's mm -hmm. the only boy. He was a part of that whole Notch Street, uh, Oregon State uh, Boxing Hall of Fame group oh, okay. who okay. was awarded that, um, that title some years ago. But for me, I'm looking at five generations of family, how I look at Portland. Portland means something to me. Mm -hmm. I have dirt. I have folks in the dirt here. Mm -hmm. And we really help to build this community. So it's more than just being the first black uh, woman on city council, the first woman of color. It is about, would my grandfather be proud to see the work that we have done and that I have done with the community to make this a better place to live? Mm -hmm. And I think he would be really, really pleased. Um, Working for Senator Wyden, I almost didn't get that job. Really? No. Actually, uh, that was when the Urban League was right, uh, really giving uh, jobs. jobs, and they were mm -hmm. matching folks up. Right. And I wanted to, I had just graduated from college, and I said, do you have a management trainee program that mm -hmm. I could use? And so they said, no, it's the SNL crisis. There are no jobs, but there's one job for this congressman. He's pretty popular, and uh, <laughs> it's a front desk. 
yeah. job. I said, well, mm, yeah, my yeah. mom's not going to like that. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm the first person in my yeah, family yeah. to okay. graduate from college. And that's OSU, wasn't it? That was Oregon State okay. University. Okay. Go yeah. Bees. Yeah, okay. And so he, she said, well, do you have a job, Loretta? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. She said, you better get over there and answer those telephones. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm going. Yeah, I know. And so, but what I didn't know was the senator, he was a congressman then. Mm -hmm. He gave me an opportunity to... Um, to have an on-the-job training management program. Mm -hmm. Because sitting at that front desk, well, yeah. that was my well, management yeah. training program. That gave me a window mm -hmm. to see what's going on in the community, what's happening, who he was meeting with, what are some of the issues in the mm -hmm. community. I learned it from the bottom up. And then I took those opportunities and became a caseworker and a case manager and then a field rep. And I did appropriations. And you know, I was able to staff the senator and write his speeches. and give him advice on what he should do on issues around education, housing, uh, economic development. And so all those things, they, um, they, they built me for this job that I'm trying to apply to the voters for today. I was built for this kind of work. I understand. I know how important it is to have different communities at the table and stakeholders at the table. I learned that from a very early age. And some people say, well, you learned about being with older folks from the senator. Well, no, I'll go back even further than that. My first memory of service, when my parents divorced and my mom moved back to the Midwest and I, I grew up in in Michigan and I would come back and forth to see my dad and my family during summers and, and mm -hmm. breaks. But my first memory of service was when I used to see my mother serve food to the Head Start kids mm -hmm. when I was young. That's the job she had mm -hmm. before she actually got a job working for General Motors. So my, um, my sense and my level of consciousness about how important it is to serve others, it goes back to my mom and my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I just had the unique opportunity to work for a man who also had that, those same kinds and, of and, values. And very enthusiastic and straight kind of a guy too. So yes, and right he had those same values. Yeah. And, and so for me, yeah. you know, if, if life would have stopped then, I would have said I had a great, amazing, yeah. wonderful life. Mm -hmm. But God had something else for me to do. Mm -hmm. He had another platform for me to um, to sit on, to be able to give a little bit more influence to others, to tell young women of color that you can also be a commissioner, a city councilor, a, a mayor, a governor, a congresswoman. You can even be president. And, and so that's the deal. I think women, we have to be asked about eight, nine times to run for office. When men, y'all wake up in the morning. And y'all say, I want to be president. And you go to sleep, and you wake up again the next morning, and you're president. Really? Yeah, look at Washington. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm but, serious. But, but, I but we have some point. very serious issues here. I understand here. your point. Yes. Housing okay. and hous yeah. housing affordability, yeah. Yeah. homelessness, and the camping associated with homelessness. It's a huge issue. It's huge. doesn't matter who I go and talk to, whether it be... Uh, a business people, a community folks, pastors, people who do economic development, everyone in this community, they understand that the camping and the homelessness, it has to, uh, we have to have some remedies for that. And that's why I want to be a city council person because I've had mm -hmm. an opportunity to watch all the housing money back and forth between the city and the county and the mm -hmm. efforts that we put forward. And uh, Chair Kafori, she has led this effort forever about homelessness. I don't think anyone has done any more for homelessness in this city other than her mother mm -hmm. to raise the level of visibility of why we need to do this. Yeah, and yeah. she was really good. And, and so, but for me, I need to take that information and those resources and give ideas and solutions and have a compassionate ear to figure out how to help the most vulnerable on our, on our city streets. Um, Having couch surfed when my son was young, I know what it's like uh, to not have your own space and place mm -hmm. and um, raise a family and, and, and try to make enough money to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's huge for me. You have someone with lived experience who gets it and that uh, will not turn away anyone from uh, having conversations. I think one of the things that the senator did teach me is it doesn't matter if you disagree with people on uh, issues. 
always have an open door for people to come in and give you ideas and talk about things so that you can um, build a better city, a better community, a better state. So that's the, uh, that's the history of where I come from. I know that Portland, the secret is out on Portland. We have 4% unemployment. People are moving here like crazy. Well, yes, 45,000 yeah. people for the past three years, a year, have mm -hmm. moved to Portland. Mm -hmm. So we're not Mayberry anymore. No, that's right. That's and right. Um, we have to have a big-time transportation, mm -hmm. transportation solution. Mm -hmm. We have to have a big-time housing and homelessness solution. And we have to have a big-time law enforcement and public safety solution mm -hmm. because we will get uh, the big one in terms of the earthquake. We're, mm -hmm. we're on a fault oh, line yeah. that's over 150 years overdue. Mm -hmm. So we have to prepare for that. And that's going to be one of my priorities is to prepare the community, particularly um, vulnerable communities, low-income communities, mm -hmm. on how to uh, navigate a crisis like an earthquake. But today, homelessness, hands down, is is the biggest issue. And you probably saw me and um, uh, Jordan Snitzer a few yeah. weeks ago. We were standing mm -hmm. in front of Wapato. We were asking the mayor, the chair, and all the commissioners to support an effort to open up Wapato for the common good of people mm -hmm who are experiencing mental health issues, uh, drug and alcohol issues, and homelessness. Because I think that we can use that building to triage our most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people we have unsheltered on our streets? <laughs> A couple I mean, of years ago when we took the county, it was like yeah, 1,700. Yeah. Right, but right, we right, know right, it's right, probably right, more right. than that. Oh, yes. And we have a lot of folks who are couch surfing, uh, particularly in an African-American community. Uh, we couch surf. We go over to Pookie's house, and then when Pookie's done, you go to Big Mama's house for two weeks, and then they're tired of you, and we just do this circle. But people have some really serious health issues that are on our streets right now. People are defecating on our streets. They're doing all manner of things. They're, they're having sex. They're intimidating folks going into businesses. Yeah. They're causing people not to be able to be comfortable. And it's not because this is what they want to do. Mm -hmm. I truly do believe that a good number of those folks, and we have the data about the people who come into our jails who are homeless, 50% of them have mental health issues. And that means if they have mental health and drug and alcohol issues, we got to put some more resources mm -hmm. into those areas so that we can help folks. We got to get these folks off the sidewalk. They can't be camping on mm -hmm. the sidewalks. And if I had Wapato open, I would have a place for them to go. I'm not trying to criminalize people. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is make us have a better city. We, we um, put $200 million into this community last year from the tourism standpoint. Mm -hmm. I sit on the Travel Portland Board as the liaison to Multnomah County. $200 million, mm -hmm. that's amazing. But one of the things that we got back from research and surveys was the homelessness. Why aren't we doing something about the homeless on our streets? So people love it. It's beautiful. It's great. Uh, jobs are plentiful. But housing is not affordable. And people of color who live right here in the north, northeast area, they've been pushed out to the fringes. And so we need to figure out a way to make sure that everyone is successful in this community. And I'm gonna be a voice for that. I'm gonna be a voice for those who are voiceless. I'm gonna be a voice for communities of color. I'm gonna be a voice for those small businesses who need help in this community. And if we wanna make sure that everybody is experiencing this unprecedented uh, prosperity, you need to put Commissioner Smith in office <laughs> because I would call myself the opportunity commissioner. That's, that's a good one. In fact, in fact, I, I will I will say you're fine <laughs> because I, you know, as you know, I, I ran the, the last time around, and I had the opportunity to see you in action. The board there room. at the county. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. And when you think about the city of Portland, District Number Two is the city of Portland. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You that's got right. Me? And you were working there on an ongoing basis. But you know, you know, the thing I noticed though, uh, it, while you were doing that kind of a deal, is that. It was some. You, you, it was as if you were, you were overworking, and I didn't see the other folks participating and getting to the table to talk about some of the issues that you were bringing up. Now, understand me. I'm, I'm, yeah. That's what I'm, yeah. I'm just being. Well, a just know, well, why, is it, why is it that so? Well, just know that uh, I work with four ladies who have the same values that I do about helping the most vulnerable in this community. I wouldn't want to serve with any other people in this community because they really do care. There's 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 just a difference in style. 
And well, it, the style is it, that you had more action than they. And did. my style is I mean, that yeah. I want to get to it. I want to get into it. I want to. I want to be really aggressive about putting out policies that help right, vulnerable right, people, right. just like I did with the Promise Neighborhood. And you probably saw where the, the Promise Neighborhood Coalition. Yeah. We got twenty five million dollars. Yeah, I've that. been trying to get that money for three years Have from you? the feds, and right? we got it. We hmm. finally hmm. got it, and right, it's going right. to help so many families from the native, uh, the Latino, the African American, the new residents. Uh, and folks who are in early childhood education, to bring them to a a space where they can uh, have an in-school model that's based on SEI, and I'm I'm really happy about that because I had given myself three years, mm -hmm. and we didn't get it for the last three years. Mm -hmm. We we it wasn't because we didn't have a good application. Mm -hmm. It was because there were so many good applicants out there. We had a hundred percent and still couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. But what we did did know that. We have a good model, and that we're going to help thousands of kids with that $28 million over mm -hmm. the next five years. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this is unprecedented. There is no program that has ever gotten this kind of prevention dollar mm -hmm. to help young people, low-income families, and do wraparound supports. Because the main thing is we want our kids to graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. We know when our kids don't graduate from high school, they are subject to all manner of things like unemployment, lack of access to health care, lack of access to a good job. And so if we can get you to graduate, we can put you in some spaces where you can uh, have success. And that's been my goal because it was so heartbreaking. And I'm a single parent of one kid, a son. When I looked at the numbers at Jefferson at one point, over 60% of the African-American men that started in, as freshmen did not graduate from high school. Oh, yeah. And what I do know is that there are 30,000 young people between the ages of 16 and 24 in this tri-county area, not just African-Americans, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, that are not working mm -hmm. and they're not in school, mm -hmm. whether it be high school or college. So we have to offer some alternatives for them. You know, like I know, the baby boomers for the next 17 years will have 10,000 people retiring yeah. every day. Yeah. So we have to have folks to be able to replenish that, that, that workforce. And that's what I'm trying to do. People talked about my, my summer jobs program, and we started it very uh, conservatively with 25 kids. Over the last eight years, we have grown that program where Multnomah County now invests $2.1 million in summer jobs mm -hmm. and pays for, personally, 650 kids. And that's, that's throughout the city. Throughout the throughout city. The that's just well. what we pay for, and mm -hmm. we place these kids in different departments mm -hmm. at Multnomah County. But the good news is, because the, the thing that folks would ding me on, they said, well, these are just summer jobs. Mm -hmm. So this year in the budget, 200 of those jobs are now year-round. So mm -hmm. these kids can have year-round mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. And my whole goal is to make sure that they network and they have professional networks that they can network with when they go to college and come back in the summers, mm -hmm. that when they graduate, that they can come back and um, have some f familiarity uh, about what they're doing and able to get work. It brings tears to my eyes when I walk into the Multnomah County building because I see young people in there right now. It's been eight years. I see young people who started with me when they were 16. They graduated from high school, went on to college, and now they work at Multnomah County. Mm -hmm. Now they have a full-time job. Mm -hmm. And so that's all I ever wanted. Mm -hmm. It was it's, it's bigger than just a summer job. It's giving you that first opportunity to have an opportunity. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the wheels on meals. I mean, I think I remember yes, that was yes. one issue that you were you you participated in quite well. Yes. And there was there was a, a issue that I think that came up about the fact that they might be cutting in some yep. aspect of it because you still sit you're still working at the, as a county commissioner. That's right. right That's now. right. I'm, I'm still, doing both. You're jobs. still doing both. I'm right running now. and, and you're running being at a commissioner. Same time. So the bottom line is that indirectly you're sort of like a, a city commissioner now. When I start thinking about <laughs> which bureau is he going to be handling, and I think that all the all the city council members are many mayors anyway. You may have you may have one senior mayor, but everybody's got to be participating on everything, right? But what about some of the senior citizen issues? You know, uh, their housing situation. I mean, you know, things are getting tough for them right now. They things can't are getting stay in tough. We um, because of the federal government, Washington is broken right now, Bruce. Really. And um, 
our president has taken a lot of money out of those social service programs that that uh, support Meals on Wheels and they come down through the state and the local mm. governments. And so we've had to uh, take up the slack a bit. Who picks it up? Um, the state or the uh, or the local government okay. like us at the county. And so I've put several pieces of of legislation in to give them additional resources mm -hmm. and you know I, I love I absolutely love 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 seniors I have about 16 aunts mm -hmm. and they probably wouldn't expect anything less from me but we also do a, a fun thing like the the pancake breakfast my my bacon and pancake mm -hmm. breakfast that I do every month mm -hmm. and so we do that but but to keep seniors in their homes mm -hmm. Multnomah County has this project called Project Independence and I have been getting calls from community members saying that they, they're on the, on the waiting list to get these services. And what the services is, we might spend about $400 a month for a worker to come in and help them um, iron their clothes, uh, mm -hmm. cook their meals, uh, give them a bath. But they can still pretty much take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so seniors were calling and saying, you know, Commissioner, when is this going to happen? So I asked the question when I was in uh, budget of the uh, manager. Mm -hmm. And I said, so tell me about this waiting list. There's over 300 people on this waiting list. How do you propose to uh, to get those folks off the waiting list and into the program? She said through attrition, Commissioner. Attrition. And I, and that's what I said. And I said so that I'm clear, so that the people are clear on TV. <laughs> so you're going to wait for the people to die, die so right. that we don't have to serve that's them. Ridiculous. And she said yes. I said not on my watch. Wow. No, you're not. You're not going to be bold enough to come and tell me. Uh, in public, right. that you're waiting for our young, our, our older people mm -hmm. to die, mm -hmm. so we don't have to mm -hmm. pay for the program. Mm -hmm. So immediately, I dropped a four hundred some odd thousand dollar amendment. Mm -hmm. I had two other people who were supporting it, it. It, it, and it passed, it and, passed. and we moved those wow. folks off that, the that, list. That, we we had to do Ooh, that. Wow. You have to be deliberate. Ooh, wow. And so when people talk about um, this race, Very and important. it's so unique because yes. this is the first time two African American women have oh, yeah. have um, yeah. made it to a runoff, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's a bad thing. I think what it says to the wider community that our values have come so close together that. We we are all caring about the same things, and we're so close. But there's a difference between the two of us. Mm -hmm. I've been effective for the last eight years and for the last 20 years of making sure that the most vulnerable in our community had resources and policies and a compassionate ear and a willingness to deliver for community members in this, in this city of Portland. My opponent, she's extreme, and I often say that when people ask me what's the difference, she's extreme, but you got to be effective when you're extreme because if you're not effective, you're just loud. And if you don't have a list of things that you've done and delivered on for the community, we can't continue to just throw bombs at people about police accountability. We have to have that. Mm -hmm. But we also, as commissioners, have to talk about other issues like small businesses. How do we help small businesses gain access to capital? How do we make sure that those folks who are sleeping on our sidewalks, that they're uh, given a place to stay and a, and a permanent place to stay? How do we make sure our at-risk youth have programs that they can go to and resources that are funneled into them? I've done that. I've been effective and at that's doing what you're that. Doing now. And that is what I'm doing. <laughs> It's not, see, everything, so there's a difference. I'm doing that right now, yeah, and I've right. done it for the last eight years. Yeah. I am the one who was a champion for the $15 uh, minimum wage at Multnomah County. So if you come to Multnomah County, there will be nothing less than a $15 uh, mm -hmm. wage hour job. Mm -hmm. That's the lowest that you can get. Mm -hmm. But the reality is it takes $25 an hour to be able to afford a one-bedroom house. Well, the well, other issue is, yeah. was, that, I, that I, was, I was exposed to when I was running mm -hmm. was the whole issue of uh, institutional racism. That, that was huge. And that I, that and was brought that, up. That was a very brought up piece aspect of it. And Trish was, was very much involved. And, and it really opened up a lot of doors of, for a <laughs> lot of people. And you were kind of like leading that charge in that piece. I, I did, I did, lead, I did that lead that charge. Were you able to carry that over? When, well, with well. You? Well, it's the it's city. A, it's I'm sorry. A, it's, it's already no, no. there. It was part no, of the city. No, no, it's, 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 it, this is real. We have started a workforce mm -hmm. equity um, pathway, mm -hmm. new stuff that we're doing, and all the commissioners voted on it. So it's going to be there after I leave. But there was a separate kind of side issue with Tricia, who was given a termination mm -hmm. notice. 
after she had uh, come back from uh, family medical leave. Her mother has cancer. Mm -hmm. And when she came back, she was given notice. She was the director. She's such a brilliant yeah, lady. And I just thought that it was Sorry unconscionable yeah. to, um, to have her at that level to be given a, a one month or a two month mm -hmm. severance. Mm -hmm. And so she was able to work out a nice severance package that was commensatory to her position. And I think that everybody was pretty pleased with it after the fact. Well, it but changed, I did have everything. to. Yeah. I did have to push that. See, yeah, I know that. I know that. And, I know that. Um, I think, well, you need to share that. Yeah, I, I did push it. I, yeah, I pushed did. it, and I wouldn't allow it. I wouldn't allow us to um, to basically tell an employee yeah. that your family doesn't count. Mm -hmm who was actually dealing and still dealing with a difficult situation about her mother in stage four cancer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's serious a difficult, that's a, that's a, very, a very deal, serious issue. that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was really great. Well, look, we got about another good five minutes mm -hmm. or so. And, and still, I'd like to, let's talk a little bit about what I plan to do. Yeah. You're going to have, you're going to have a seat at city hall now. Yes. You're still at city hall. I'm at, and then the mayor's going to the county. The, the mayor's, uh, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm trying to be a nice guy. This guy, he, <laughs> but he's still on the job training right now. He's, he's gonna, sort of gonna we be, all are on the job uh, no, training. No, you, be, you, be, you, know, you you got 28 years under your belt. That's right. That's a whole different ball game. <laughs> I'm just saying that my point is that. Here you are, you've, you've, you've experienced this, you're exposing the yes. situation aspect of it. And I started looking at the assignment thing, and you know what I'm saying? You've been dealing in housing and a whole bunch of other yes. things. And then when he said, well, gee, I'm just going to give you the fire bureau, and what was the other one? It's the uh, fire bureau, 911. But, but that's um, the 911, but in all due respect, I know and both the emergency of you. management uh, I, department. I know both of you, but I know one you're working on in it right now. And actually, the opponent. Is, uh, so is, here's the deal. I'm, I'm, the deal? I'm gonna I'm gonna look forward to working with. Are you gonna mayor. hold back about uh, well, no, doing I'll, your things about housing and things? No, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna look really forward to working with Mayor Wheeler because he did something that was okay. really progressive okay. on Friday. Okay. What, what he thing? came out and said he is looking at opening up a mental health and drug and alcohol kind of triage center at Wapato. I think that's a win. I didn't see the paper on it. It was, did he, it was did Friday. He that? Yes, he Friday? did. It, it was Friday. I was doing something else on my deck. <laughs> <laughs> but understand this, that's a huge that push. That is huge. He didn't have to jump into this fight. Well, he's in it now. He, he, he knows and he understands. Understand that Ted Wheeler knows exactly how important it is to make sure that we um, that we treat the folks who are who are on our city streets with oh, the heavy, issues it's heavy, it's heavy. that they have. And it's over 50% of those folks, they have mental health and drug oh, and alcohol. So I think that's a win. Okay, that's and good. now that's we good. have to figure out how to pay for it and how much it's actually going to cost mm -hmm. and how many people are we going to put mm -hmm. out there in Wapato that they'll be able to be triaged and, and they won't be on our city streets. But we got people like Homer Williams that are sitting out there that have been spending a lot of time well, in that Well, he and Homer is Williams. Is he at the table? Is gonna, is Homer at the Williams table? is at the table. Okay, okay. Uh, Jordan Snitzer is at the table okay, okay. With, the, with the mayor. So don't poo-poo this because the mayor has uh, made a significant, a significant um, change in into where he was before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think it's, I think it's um, amazing. It is progressive. It is forward thinking, mm -hmm. and it's something that I think that the people of the city of Portland is going to really, really appreciate. I, I noticed also too that he put those cans out. I guess he raised up about two hundred thousand dollars or so to. Get yeah. new cans. Of, yeah. uh, put, uh, he, he made the statement about making the city clean again. Yeah, I, I, okay, that's he cool. should. He should. Maybe the, tell him not, not two or three years. Let me now, tell you something. When I get in office, when I win okay, this right, on November right. 6th, okay. I'm going to be out there with a broom okay. and I'm going to be sweeping up okay. this city okay. and we're going to make sure that the folks that are okay. on the street, that they have a place yeah. to go okay. and that we're going to get them the proper treatment that they deserve and need. Yes. Well, in all due respect, I'm glad that both of you run, but I really appreciate the fact that you're working the city right now. I mean, you're sitting on I'm the working table. in the city sit, at the at no, the you, county. You work. Yeah, you're in the city, but that your, your yeah. district was the city. That's right. I mean, this, this my district is in the city of Portland. And you can't. And, and I'll be right up front with you. Uh, even when I was running, I mean, you did not ignore those issues. No. When you were sitting in that chair. And I, I did. And I'm, I'm being I'm being straight up about it. Whole yes. And uh, you know there was red, but the other I, I I didn't see the action that I I've seen from you. <laughs> You'd be a hell of a city council person. And, you know, I'll still be there. <laughs> I expect you. Yeah, I expect you to be there. Hold my feet to the fire oh, yeah. saying, mm -hmm. Commissioner Smith, what do you plan to do about these folks yeah. on the street? When are they going to, how are we going to decrease those numbers? What are we going to do for veterans? Because the oh, other yes, thing that's that, another major that issue. We, we have a real 
You did something. We have something a real opportunity. You did something just, just I heard that yeah. something like you tried two to put Two blocks away, together. two blocks away, yeah, I put a you. resolution in for Cascadia. They just opened up an affordable housing um, uh, apartment for people who have mental health cha challenges and you have to be a veteran or a senior to get in. Mm -hmm. Now that was two hundred and fifty thousand. Wow. I had to go get two more votes That's on my good. board to, to make got, that happen. You got it done? I got it done. Yeah, I, 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 I deliver from my district. Oh, yeah, I yeah. deliver. Well, I may, I may, <laughs> I may, I may let you lead the, the Pledge of Allegiance this next Thursday. <laughs> good job. Good thank job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I, I know you. I know you're busy. I know you're running. You got Mary Street with you now. You got the transportation czar. I call her. Oh yeah. She's oh a, yeah. She's an awesome campaigner and whatever. But she's she's very much involved. Very. Yes. She has good background about. About community good and, and know what's all about that aspect say. of it, and I'm glad she's with your campaign. So look here, good luck to you. Thank and, you. Uh, and hey, good luck. And I'll see you. you. I'll see you. I appreciate okay. it. And, and I do have to. I do have to tell you, I appreciated your effort during the campaign. I saw you work like I have never seen you, you work be before. Me. You did. You did an well, excellent you, job. I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right, folks. We're gonna take a. We, you met her. There she is. <laughs> you got your family. You're gonna be. You're gonna be getting your. Your, your, your votes, if you will, your mail, if you will, your envelopes. <laughs> well, I guess you, you would like for them to vote for Yeah, it? yeah. Please vote I, for I, I can join your campaign Smith. right now. Well, I'll tell you what. They can go to Loretta at LorettaForPortland.com. Uh, that's my email, and that's my website. Vote. Uh, the uh, ballots come out this Wednesday. Okay. Lots of the we old only folks had like 29, We only had 29% people turn out in May. We got to okay, get, get folks to come out. out. Well, you got to get them out. I can't out win there. if y'all don't come I out. Got, now, by the way, they got senior citizens out there, and with all due respect, you know, they don't know how to do the computer. Can they call you and say, They can hey, look, call me. Okay, what's your number? They you got can a number? Call me. What's your number? Give you ask me that number? Give me that number. Give me a number. <laughs> senior citizens. Only 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 senior citizens. If it's senior citizens, call me at 503-490-6041. Okay. Yes. Okay. Everybody else call Mary 24 hours I'll a day. I'll call me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Good. All right, folks. We're going to take a short break, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay. Thank you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. You know, we will. Welcome back to Oregon Voters Day. Yes, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Now, well, now we're going to get down, get down to maybe talking a little politics there, here and bringing it home, so to speak. And joining me in this uh, in that conversation is Bob uh, 
But when you know Bob, not only calls him Robert, but I call him Bob. When, he, when he's on the golf course, it's Robert. Because <laughs> <laughs> around me, it's Bob. <laughs> so, so anyway, he's wearing his hat today, and um, I thought it would be a good opportunity to, you know, just talk about things that get you out to vote. Because yeah. we really have to get out and vote this time around. Uh, we got a city here, and in all due respect, the Pacific Northwest is the place to go. That's it. And we've always been just sitting there with no, no, no problems before. Nobody just rushing in and, and dealing with our resources. We had, you know, it was a beautiful city, city of roses mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of things. But people are moving here, and, and now with the advent of Florida, the Florida hurricane that just happened, if you will. I mean, millions of folks lost their homes. They had no benefits, this, that, and the other. And folks are coming here. And now we've got people that are still here. We've been just kind of laying back and mm -hmm. taking it easy, so to speak. And we got a problem, so we got to try to maintain our status here in Oregon, and especially the largest city, the, the living room, if you will, uh, of the, our state, which is Portland, Portland, Oregon. And uh, so, anyway, uh, we got some things that we got to deal with today. And as I indicated, we started off the show. Everybody's got their voters pamphlets now. That's right. They got their voters pamphlet aspect of it. These are the folks that are going to be running, and and the issues that are going to be talking about. There's a lot of other issues and whatever. Yeah. But let's just start off with. Uh, just as a kind of a backup, I just happened to know that that uh, Bob is, uh, has has been around here for quite some time too, and and I'd like for him just to comment a bit about uh, about that city council race. It, it's the city of Portland is a tough situation right now. The city, uh, when I look when I look at the city of Portland, uh, first let me say hi, Bruce. Um, it was a hard, it was a tough time getting here. And was that uh, the fire on eighty four? Yeah. A car caught on fire there, and then they had a couple of accidents wow. as well. But otherwise, I'd have been here earlier because uh, right. okay. I really wanted to get in on on uh, the conversation with right. uh, with uh, well, I always want to say Congress, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, Commissioner Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Multnomah County, uh, the city of Portland, has a big has a big big election coming up. Yeah, yeah, see. I mean, in more ways than one, you got you got a, two people. That fight in different air in different ways. Oh yeah, so you got one inside. that knows how to to, to navigate mm -hmm. the political way of getting things done, and you got one that can agitate to get uh, to try and get things done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's one it's a situation where you the people are going to have to show up to the polls. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, this can be a one-term election for either one of them. Yeah, that's a good point. good point. I mean, and you have to make what uh, your feelings known as to what you expect from your elected officials. Mm -hmm. It's not just these two; it's all of them. Mm -hmm. Because they're they're running, they're they're doing what they think needs to be done rather than what should be done. Mm -hmm. And when they start thinking about what needs to be done, most of the time it's because someone is supporting them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You make a good point there because you're right. Because when you think about uh, those two women, the two women that are running now, mm -hmm. in terms of their involvement, you know, one was a one was a state representative at one point in time, was very much involved in that, and, and then locally, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then on the other hand, you got someone that's been there 28 years. Right. You know what I mean in that arena. And then at the same time, being so much involved, and realistically, we don't have that kind of involvement on our city council right now. That's right. Including the mayor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be an asset for that person. In all due respect, that person is going to really bring the issues to the table. That's it. It's going to really bring the issues to the table. And hopefully the mayor will respect that. And the other two two city council people, well, actually three of them now, because right. two more, two women and, and, and Nick Fitch is still, mm -hmm. still going to be there. But when you think about the two people that are running now, you're talking about an asset. I really, really think it's an right. asset. It's not just a, these two black women. Right. It's about women with background. That's right. I mean, background. They, they know what's going on. Got me? And I hope that the mayor will take advantage of that. Right. And making sure that, uh, well, it's not a matter. It's kind of like saying some of the words that he's made his move from the standpoint of trying to put him in, in, in different areas. Each one, each has responsibility, but he's the guy to assign the bureaus. Right. You got me? But when you've got the kind of folks that are running here now, mm. they got they got they got working power. They've they've been there. That's it. They've dealt with the people across the board. Right. You know? And you know, and and my thing is 
I look at I look at uh, Commissioner Smith, mm -hmm. and I'm going, wow, she she's still working oh, yeah, right now. things that she started three, four mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. to get money into our area mm -hmm. to do positive things mm -hmm. for those that are suffering, mm -hmm. and that you can't you can't beat yeah. that, yeah. you know. Uh, I just hate the fact that I don't have a vote in this in this election, yes. you know. But I'm I'm also pushing. But you, you've always had one. You you might you in it. terms of where you've lived, you've always been yeah. involved. Well, I got a lot of process. family here. Well, you, but you've been involved in the process. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been we've been there both of us. That's it. A long time. And you know, in Clackamas we County, we have we have a we have a state representative that's running that's been doing some positive things, you know. And I'm just at a loss as to what. It is the people want, mm -hmm. you know, because they they talk about housing, they talk about uh, the homeless, mm -hmm. but they're not saying Absolutely. do something yeah, about yeah, the yeah. housing, right. do yeah, something yeah, about. Yeah. And now we we have candidates now that wants to do something, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, after that uh, uh, news, uh, being on the news talking about, uh, I always call it. Wapato, yeah, Wapato, yeah, Wapato. you know, was been around being for on years. The, yeah, uh, was on the news talking about that. The mayor makes a move, yeah, you know, do that's what you want. You don't you don't want someone that's gonna shake him and make him back up. You want someone that's gonna talk and make him do uh, take well, action. He had the explosion when he was county chair, yeah, but he was just a neophyte. You know, due respect, it. he was just new at the spot, if mm -hmm. you will, and he left. Right, but he did try to make a move and he couldn't get the votes mm -hmm. as chair. As chair, he couldn't get the vote to do something that he's looking at possibly doing right now. Got me? But now he's sitting in another seat aspect of it. And uh, he's got two votes right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And it's himself and I know Loretta is yeah. falling in the same, same vein aspect of it. And maybe Fish, you know, you never know. And my question has been, the people that are out there have been lucky so far. The weather hasn't changed. Yeah, right. We've been having some great yeah, weather, right. you know. Right. And but man, when that weather changes, would you rather be on the street, yeah. Yeah. or would you rather be in a building? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, a jail is some place you lock people up, or hold them for certain things, and all of that. A building is where someone can go to get out of the ele mm -hmm. elements. Mm -hmm. And that and that place that we built for a jail will become a building mm -hmm. if we do things right, and that's the thing that I'm looking at. Well, you know, when, when when people start talking about that, like you said, when that first issue came up about a jail, when you think about the people that are living on the street right now, mm -hmm. what's the first thing that they're concerned about? Security of their stuff. Right. You can't lock a tent. <laughs> you can't go around the corner and use a restroom or something, right? And you know, just leave your wares and stuff like that. And uh, I couldn't, uh, you know. But the bottom line is that it's communication. We do have media. Sometimes our communication branch of what we're trying when we want to get things done don't do enough work to really educate the people. Right. As you know, people don't pick up the newspaper. In all due respect, we we have several only several newspapers that people have access to on a free level. Mm -hmm. We got the Portland Tribune. We got the Willamette Week, and we got the Mercury. Those, those are the major publications aspect of it. So we've got we've got some of the minority newspapers, but I'm talking about the three major ones. Right. You know my point, and they do a job, but maybe not enough of the job, if you will. And then that's that's a very very important piece because, and then you, and then the idea is to educate people about what we're talking about. We're talking about human beings that are dying on the streets. That's right. I mean, that's the serious thing. And it, and then a lot of times we really don't start taking action, like you said, mm -hmm. until once that weather hit, then all of a sudden people get concerned. You right. want to pull blankets out. They want to, they want concern about the people that are dying. I want to feed them and this, that, and that. Now is the time to do it. We have a facility, right. and in all due respect, the, 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 the people own that facility. Mm -hmm. We got people representing us. I didn't like the idea when they when they talked about how much it cost to build that. Right. Some sixty, seventy million dollars. And then at the end of the day they sell it for five million dollars. That doesn't make any sense to me. Right. You got know I me? Mean? And it's been this long. And, it, and like I say, fortunately, it's gonna be on the table because uh, the commissioner that is running happened Loretta who happens to be running, put it on the table. Like That's the right. rest of the folks 
who couldn't get anything done with it. You see, so maybe we might be able to get some. We need to get something done with that piece. That's it. And because we already had some things in place, we had Homer Williams, mm -hmm. Homer Williams, who basically was kind of like started out you know, when we started this whole right. business about he's still there and he's trying to put something together. Hopefully, he's at the table. We we had uh, we had we had the gentleman Boyle. We Boyle. had uh, we had Boyle from uh, from Columbia Columbia Sportswear. Mm -hmm. He put one point five million dollars in the pot to deal with this issue aspect yeah. of it. We got well, we got Reese now. We got Reese, who's a, actually he's the intake guy because you know he's the guy that picks people up, mm -hmm. take them to the institution, cleans them up a little, if you will, and then we'll let them wait for the judge. And he goes to the judge, and the judge decides which way they go. <clears throat> uh, they get on probation, then they stay right there if they get a short right. term, or they go down to the institution in Salem or, or where, whatever. But the fact is, we got a system that's still in a point that it's, it, it can happen and it can take the folks off the street. That's it. It does two things when you take those people off the street. One, it it, it improves your community. Yeah, it does. Oh, that's huge. That's you know, huge. Uh, it takes some of that fear away from from the ladies who want to run in the oh. evening. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at some some tr some yeah. small yeah. things. Yeah. I'm not talking about the big yeah. picture of yeah. it. Make your city yeah. seem like they're doing something yeah. positive yeah. for people that are here. Exactly. You know, uh, we have to stop. The bickering. Yeah, I'm yeah. a Republican. Yeah, You're a oh, Democrat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, uh, right, 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 right. You know, right. Trump said right. this. Right, right. right. Trump um, can say anything he wants. Yep, yep, yep. You yep, know, yep, because yep, he's yep. not affecting anyone. Yep, yep, my yep, question, yep. my question to my friends is: Over the past two years, what have Trump done that improved your life? Okay. Well, he's he's president. You know, I'm, uh, I'm I mean, not, uh, he's president, but what has he done to well, improve well, your well, life? I, look, and I, I want someone in office in my community that's going to do things to improve the things around me, you know, and I know that if they improve, the, improve things around me, it's going to touch you. It's going to touch this neighbor and everyone else. Well, we don't want to go at that level. You know. Let's bring it down home again. Okay, <laughs> we at home. Let's get to Oregon. Let's talk about Oregon. Okay, let's talk about Oregon. The key is that what are we going to be able to do here now? And then be right around. The winter's right around the corner. Yes, that's something very specific. And then, like I say, even the summers and all this other good stuff. We got needles on the street. We got people urinating uh -huh. and this, that, and the other. Defecating we got anywhere and everywhere. People want to know one thing: who's if I'm a, if I'm going to vote for someone, who's going to be able to deal with my issues? I want to get up tomorrow morning. And, I, and, and walk in the front of my yard or whatever, and there's no trash on it. I want to go to my car, someone had not burglarized it. Right. I want someone urinating in the front of my kids during the day. I don't, I don't want needles in my front yard because I've got animals, I've got pets. That are, you know, we got, sure. Uh, it, it, that's where we are right now. That's it. And people have been saying that for quite some time. And I'm just saying, hopefully, hopefully, just like you're saying, this time we're going to get it done. We're yeah. right in the midst of election, so now you have the opportunity to select some folks. That's it. That can respond to that issue. And I'm not just talking. In all due respect, I'm not just talking about the city city council job. It just so happened a lot of the issues because this is the largest city mm -hmm. we have in the state of Oregon, and then and the concern with the, i.e. with the folks that are running here locally, right, is to deal with that concern. That's right. So the thing is that <clears throat> please look at this vote voters pamphlet, find out who's running for office. And ask them those questions. That's true. What, what do you bring to the table to solve this problem? Do you have access to the money? Yes. Somewhere because we're going to need some money. That's right. Because you know, like just like uh, well, Mayor Willie he just made the point that he found two hundred thousand dollars to get we a few more cans yes. to get garbage cans. You need more than garbage cans. Yes. You know, you need some you know, dumpsters or, or some some sort of a process, Bob. And I, I'll share this with you. I used to work for for waste management in USA Waste, mm -hmm. and and my point is that. Well, I was in recycling and all this, that, and the other. And I think about, I think it looked like someone could make the deal. Could call these guys together. I mean, the county, you know, Metro is very much involved mm -hmm. in the piece. Go down to that committee and say, okay, fine. We got a problem, haulers. We right. got a problem, haulers. And we're going to need, we're going to need some donations. Donations. Uh, donations for drop boxes mm -hmm. in certain areas. Right. Now that we got that piece. Now, Reese, Mr. Reese, uh, Sheriff Reese, look here. We're going to need some folks cleaning our streets for a change. Mm -hmm. Now, the federal government pays pays to get that work done. Right. Now, we need some something from our local standpoint. And then, and then say, so, okay, fine. Now, how do we get them off the street? Okay, well, we got the police who basically pick people up mm -hmm. and take them to the intake, right? right? You got me? Well, the bottom line is that we used to have ordinances that says when you threw, if you, if you, if they can show you 
physically throwing stuff out or urinating on the street, they'd pick you up, mm -hmm. even if it's a misdemeanor type deal. But the idea is that, okay, you might pick that person up, right? Put them in a secured place, clean them up, and then guess what? Get them on the street cleaning stuff up. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, then that pay pensions yeah, for and, the things you do wrong. And that restitution, that restitution, for the first part of the restitution mm -hmm. is the time you have to spend because of what you did. Right. Now, after that, if you're still working, then you, you give them minimum wage right. and let them work. And hopefully by that time, they'll have a place to go, like wop a toe, mm -hmm. to stay and pay the overhead, blah, blah, blah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, to me, I'm just throwing out something. You, we've talked about this before. Just a plan of some I mean, sort somebody's some got sense. to think yeah, that's right. uh, past their own ears. That's right. That's you right. Know, that's and right. I, and right. I, I agree with you. We Rose. talked about that. Yeah. We talked about that. You know, of what's what's the harm in call in, in calling waste management yeah. or whoever the hauler yeah. is in your yeah. area and saying, Hey, can you drop off ten drop boxes yeah. Yeah. over here and yeah. here and here? Yeah. You uh or you give know, a break on that tax. Yeah. Like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, but get the thing find done. A way. You find a way. Mm -hmm. And because you know, in all due respect, no one wants to stay out in that weather. No. You know what I'm saying? I mean look at what look how we treat animals. Yeah. We, we don't we don't throw them away or throw them in drunk boxes. We we got we got a, a human way of doing that. We've got the we got the humane society, right? That's it. We got a process. We take care of things. Why can't we take care of a human being? Uh, we've become uh, we have become I. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It don't. It's not a. Uh, I hold a blind eye. I hold a blind eye to it. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you caused it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so they don't want to. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I hear all these things all the time, and it's just sickening. Yeah. You know, whatever happened to help your help your fellow man? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm a firm believer that if your house is on fire, I, if, the, if, uh, if I can, I'm going to come over and help you put it out. Mm -hmm. If your house is next to mine, and if cinders are coming on my house, I'm gonna put the holes on my house, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna and I'm gonna tell you where to put the holes on yours to stop both of our houses from burning down. But if you're a good neighbor and you have a problem and you don't have nowhere to go, I look like I might have a room yeah, for yeah, you for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we've gotten away from that. Yeah. Ninety-nine, I'd say, ninety percent of us don't even know ten of our neighbors. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. You know, and so how do we? come together when we're not together when we're together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know i mean it's it's just really it's really well, shameful you know and i might add to to the viewing audience now you got to understand bob and i are talking about this we've been talking about this for years oh. and we try to bring the issues to the table aspect of it so this is just not just talking about whatever this is what you're going to have to do when you get this voters pamphlet That's in it. your hand you know you, it's not it, i realize there's there's a lot of written stuff about mm -hmm. certain things but you need to know who the people who you're voting for who can bring some, and you can have these same discussions that we're having right. around your table. Get those neighbors together. Pull this, this voters pamphlet, put it on the front table there, get some coffee and whatever, mm -hmm. and talk about it. Because they may know a little bit about the person, or they may know more about the issues or whatever, and get together as a group. Right. Because this is a very, very important election. We got, I think we, as far as I'm concerned, what I've envisioned in, in the past was a beautiful city. And we've had issues. Yes. We've had issues of race. I mean, the whole nine yards. But here's an opportunity. We're gonna be. It's gonna be forced on us. That's right. We, if we don't do something, all of a sudden we're gonna look like we're back east again. And since these these floods and all this stuff, this this weather and all this other mm -hmm. stuff, people are coming to this this oh, state yeah. and to this city. Mm -hmm. This is the front yard. And they're bringing that attitude that they had Big there Big here. Time. That's right. And making changes that we. Have not, or not, uh, many of us have left behind yes. or have become yes. or are not used to. Yes, yes. And so, you know, I look at, when I look at this bo voters pamphlet, I looked at 103, I think mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And it says something about voting so that they won't tax food or yeah, something yeah, of this nature. Yeah. I'm going, we don't tax food. Yeah, right, right. So you want to change my constitution so we don't? Yeah. That's got to be a catch. There's something wrong. Yep, yep, you yep, know, that's yep. the first thing I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. But I got we got people out there that are saying, that's a good idea. Yes. Now they can't never tax our food. No, but now you're going to pay on your toilet paper. Yep. Yeah. Now you're going to pay on the non-food yeah. items. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a backdoor way of yeah. trying to get into your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we have to become smarter. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because some people are coming in from outside the area to take to take advantage of the things that we have. Well, you know, that's, that's another good mm-hmm. point you made. Because in all due respect, <laughs> this is a selfish presentation. <laughs> oh, yes. This is about self. Mm-hmm. Whether it becomes in a ballot, whether it becomes in a, an initiative. And all due respect, I'd rather become in a, in a candidate. You got to separate that too. That's right. You got to make sure you get that human aspect of it, and the person that's going to really represent those issues, and that can educate you about what these issues are all about, <laughs> especially on these ballots. But better than that, educate yourself about themselves. And in fact, that's why I did the the, you know, the, the kind of, we've been doing the interviews mm-hmm. with these candidates. But we the way we've interviewed them, we've interviewed them about who they are. Right. And what do they bring to the table? And, you know, that's what we got to do. And unfortunately, a lot of times you can, you can get yourself some money. You can buy a seat. That's, that's it. <laughs> you don't have to go. You know, I was just talking online yeah. uh, to some people about things like, yeah. why is it that you, can, you, you don't have to go out and do it yourself? Yeah. You can have somebody else do it for right, you. Right, 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 right. You know, right. Uh, politicians right. don't have to make a statement right. and they don't say what party right. they are with That's right, no. but somebody else will come out, yeah. uh, can make a statement yeah. about them yeah. Yeah. for them yeah. 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 I mean we have become so lazy yeah. you know it's shameful but we the people are still in control That's because right. we have the power of That's the right. button. That's something that they don't understand. <laughs> And you got to really understand, and that's why we're, we're spending this time right now because we're going to get now we're going to really get into some more candidates. But the bottom line, but the most of our show is going to be about trying to educate you, right? And give you some sense of don't be afraid to ask those questions. Be like God. Don't yeah, tell yeah. you what to do. Right, Just right. give you that. Get, right. Let you know that's, what that's happens. Right. That's, right. What, that's right. What's going on? That's right. You and then you determine. That, that you make you determine. You make the people. decision. And the, the, those major issues are right now sitting on the table, big time. The Wapato situation yes. is huge. Mental illness is huge. Uh, you know the, the drug issue is huge. That's it. So the kids that get in there and, and do it, do your homework, do your homework. And if you don't know, that, as Bob said, knock mm-hmm. on your neighbors, get to know some of these neighbors around you, three or four houses down. Hi, I would, the uh, hi, uh, you've been in the neighborhood a while. We that's haven't right. talked. I that's just right. want to say hello. That's right. That's, that's right. all. It's a very, very, very important piece. Well, Bob, this is going to be very exciting, and 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 I'm looking forward to maybe we're going to do some other things. I'm going to. I got some more folks are going to be coming in, and and uh, we're going to sit down and talk with them about it. Okay. And hopefully, you might be available to, to oh, do yeah. some of those. Hey, uh, uh, I'm making myself available okay. because this election is just that important. It's more important yeah. than my golf game right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you've been there, you know. We, oh we, yeah. We got to talk about labor. We got to talk about this apprenticeship thing. Mm-hmm. We just got to maybe go back and and talk about. Um, uh, some of the things that are still on the table that shouldn't be on the table. That's it. I mean, <laughs> some of the fights we're fighting, yes. we've been, uh, been 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 fought before us. Yes. yes. And they're still going on. Yes. And my question is, why? Yes, 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 yes. What yes. Ha- like man, uh, like Nelson Mandela said when I was in South Africa, we should not be fighting each other. Mm-hmm. We are South Africans. We are all South Africans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not a race thing. Mm-hmm. It's us. Mm-hmm. And that's what we got to get past that race thing yep. Yep. and realize we're Americans. Mm-hmm. We are all Americans. We should be working awesome. together as much as possible. Well said, my friend. Mm-hmm. Okay, folks, you got his word. I'll see you next week. Hang in there. And again, open this book. Open this voters pamphlet. Open it up, folks. Very important. And when you get your ballot, vote. 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 Have a good evening. Take care.